Uh, my name is Pastor Hal York and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today our verse is going to be in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. When we read, Hear my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Well, I trust everybody had a, a blessed summer with some time to relax with friends and family and enjoy a bit of the outdoors. And today we're going to resume our Truth in the Trenches devotional, which are basically short five to eight minute studies in the book of Proverbs. And uh, the format we use is we usually pick a verse and just spend a, a few minutes thinking about what that verse has to say to us in, in a devotional kind of a style. Uh, the, Proverbs 23 reminds us, reminds us that there is an inseparable connection between belief and practice. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The relation between divine truth and Christian character is that of cause to effect. John 8.32 reminds us, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from ignorance, free from prejudice, free from error, free from the wiles of Satan, free from the power of evil. But if the truth is not known, then such freedom will not be enjoyed. Such freedom is disguised as bondage. And in reality, it is bondage. And I think this quote by A.W. Pink is a great way to look at the book of Proverbs that the truth sets us free, but we need to know the truth or else we are subjected to a lifetime of bondage. Proverbs is filled with principles and wise sayings that when lived out practically form character that let us, lead us in the right way and keep us from a multitude of errors that can mar our lives in many, many ways. And we need to be reminded that promises, the Proverbs are not promises, they're, they're precepts or they're principles or guidelines for wise living. Paul Washer uses the illustration of they're like an old man sitting on a park bench watching the lives of people over many, many years. And as he watches them, he observes their choices. He observes where those choices lead. He observes their good choices, their bad choices, the mistakes they made, as well as the good things they practice. And, he's, and, he, and he writes down and records the corresponding results of those choices because choices always lead somewhere. And that's what wisdom is, is looking down the road and, and seeing the, the outcome of an action, what the outcome of an action will be or result in. Wisdom is knowing how to use knowledge properly. And as we read scripture, we're, we must be always reminded that God understands life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And wise choices are a part of that abundant life in Christ. But these are not just hoops that we jump through. Verse 7 of Proverbs 1 reminds us that wisdom begins with the fear of God or fear of the Lord, meaning we must have a proper reverence beginning with a proper relationship with God that is found only through faith in Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection on the cross. That's where he purchased our redemption. That's where he reconciled us and brought us back to God through his blood on the cross. And he rose again the third day. And we now walk by faith in that newness of life. That new life is lived out through the power of the Holy Spirit in us, guiding us, teaching us the scriptures, teaching us Proverbs. There are instructions that warn us, exhort us, encourage us, and in just about every area of our lives, Proverbs have something to tell us. It has many things to tell us and teach us. And so we spent these last, well, 300, 300 over 300 studies we've done, 300 of these Truth in the Trenches studies we've done, over the, since 2020, and we've been hopefully encouraged as we walk through this wonderful book, and we'll be continue to be as we go through it again this this coming year. But our verse says, "Hear, my son, our, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching." And I guess we could begin by just re saying that here, the the proverb Solomon is encouraging us to have ears to hear, ears to understand, ears that listen. May we say with David as we come to the scriptures, teach me your way. Hear your father's instruction. It's positive. Listen to your father. Tune your ears to his instruction. Wisdom is for those who want it. As we see all through Proverbs, it is not playing hard to get. And God tells us that it is wise to hear our parents' instruction, to hear, to understand, and to apply ourselves to learn and to do what we hear. This is the posture of a humble heart of one who is not wise in their own eyes, of one who longs to learn, willing to admit they don't know it all. 
I mean, how many heartaches could have been averted if parents' instruction and teaching could have been heeded by their children? Now, today, this would be regarded as old-fashioned, outdated by many. But as you look at the state of the family and the children and our society in general, we think about the new ideas and philosophies and trends that are just coming like a tsunami into our, into our schools, into our churches, into our world. They aren't producing children who make wise choices. They're making foolish choices. They're making life choices that can destroy their life. They're making choices that lead us further away from God, not to Him. If you talk to most people today, they don't believe there are any answers. Nobody has answers. People are convinced there are no answers, so everybody just does what they think is right in their own eyes, refusing to listen to instruction. And consequently, children are today are filled with fear and intimidation and hopelessness, despair, heartbreak, aimlessness, and violence. One of the people groups where suicide is on the rise in exponential numbers is among teenagers for this very reason. They get, they're getting no answers to life. Their life makes absolutely no sense. They've made choices that even as a teenager, they can see it's going to destroy their lives, mar them for the rest of their life. But the tragic thing is, on one hand, the, but the good news on the other hand is there are answers. It's tragic for those who won't listen, but it's great news for those who will. And the home needs to be the place where parents have something wise to teach their children. And the children have been taught early in their life to listen to the parents. Wisdom is calling out, come, listen. Christ is calling to a lost world, come to me all you who labor and I will give you rest. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will guide your choices as he fills your mind with biblical wisdom, as he empowers us through the spirit living in us, all those who know Christ, as we spend time in God's word. We will hear the instruction of the people God has put in our lives as parents or pastors or friends or leaders in our church. And if we're humble and if we're wise, we will listen. So may this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life which we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.